Four voters in Oneida County will decide on the next Oneida County judge. One of the candidates is joining us today. Mary Sawinski is an assistant district attorney here in Oneida County. Mary, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for letting me be here. Tomorrow we're going to talk to Mike Fugel, her challenger. But uh, Ms. Sawinski, tell us about your background. Why do you think you're qualified to be a judge here in Oneida County? Well, I'm a fifth generation Oneida County resident. I was born and raised on a farm in Sugar Camp. And now I live in Three Lakes with my husband, Richard Javinkuski. And I've been a lawyer for over 25 years. I've been a prosecutor for over 20 years. And I've been an assistant district attorney in Oneida County for almost eight years. And so I have a good mix uh, of both criminal and civil uh, experience because I've also worked in the Vilas County Corporation Counsel's Office, and I owned and managed my own law firm in Oneida County. And Mary, what kind of changes uh, would you like to make in Judge Bloom's court? Well, first of all, uh, we should be very grateful to uh, Judge Bloom and certainly congratulate him on his retirement. It's very well deserved. He's been a judge now for 12 years, but also served in, as the district attorney and did work as a uh, defense attorney uh, uh, before this and so uh, he has a variety of past experience that's uh, allowed him to be an excellent judge and I've had a great example to follow. Uh, I think it's a little premature to start talking about changes before I've seen what it's like to be on his side of the bench uh, but I look forward to addressing uh, any changes that need to be made uh, if and when that happens. And for the people at home, Judge Bloom is retiring, which is why there's an opening on the court right now. So I kind of want to throw a situation at you, okay, Mary? This is a little curveball for you. Sounds good. So let's say you're in a courtroom, you're the judge, and law enforcement, a police officer, is giving you one account of a situation. Meanwhile, the defendant's account, the person who's accused of something, is giving you a different account that's conflicting. How do you kind of weigh those two accounts and find the truth? So the first thing I would say is that having been a, an attorney for uh, over 25 years and a prosecutor for over 20 of those years, uh, I've heard testimony in a variety of types of cases. And the first thing you need to do is compare the facts to your common sense and apply logic and reason. Um, it's not all that difficult uh, if someone is really uh, not being truthful uh, to compare their version of events uh, to what all of us experience in the course of our normal uh, day, right? Um, and the fact that I've had uh, so many years of experience doing both ci civil and criminal cases uh, will really come in handy when it comes time to make those important decisions. And Mary, what would you say um, are kind of like your Ask, like your thoughts, your goals that uh, running for judge that you want to, that you hope to achieve? Well, first of all, uh, as soon as I take the bench and even before that, I would like to really start listening to what individuals within our justice system, the staff that work in the courthouse, the defendants and defense attorneys uh, that uh, are uh, going through the system uh, as uh, on the criminal side, uh, attorneys who handle civil cases, litigants, uh, and hear what they think about how efficient and effective our, our system is. Um, it can get very easy to fall into the habit of every day doing the same thing the same way, and it makes it easy for those of us that work in the court system. But I think uh, we owe it um, to police officers, uh, deputies, others using the system to listen to what their ideas might be for how things could be done differently. Secondly, uh, I think that um, uh, Judge Bloom uh, and Judge Sheik, now both, um, if you look at the numbers of our court system versus other court systems in our area, uh, they're very efficient in terms of moving their cases uh, very uh, effectively and efficiently. And uh, with any luck, I'll have an opportunity to do the same. Mary, I have many more questions for you. However, we are out of time. But thank you for spending a few minutes with us. Thank you uh, very much. Of course, good luck to you. We will have Mr. Mike Fugel on tomorrow on Up North at 4. When we come back, we'll be joined by the Easter Bunny. We'll see you in a few minutes.